Congressman Greg Stubbe. Both of you welcome to the program. Nicole, I'm going to come to you first. Um, I, I would hope that the Republican Congress's priorities are not the priorities of Joe Biden's, and therefore, to actually put your fingerprints on what's happening in the government, Congress has to actually pass a, a set of spending bills mm -hmm. so you can cut in certain places and increase in others. That's coming up around the corner. Is Congress, with a very slim majority, are you guys going to be able to pass a funding bill to put your priorities in place? Well, first, let me say what you saw right there from the administration was complete gaslighting. These yes. are problems that Joe Biden created with his policies, his executive orders, and his massive spending. We are trying to stop that. We passed more um, more bills than the Senate did in terms of setting our funding priorities. Uh, but the reality is, is that we passed legislation in the House to, by the way, undo what Joe Biden has done with energy costs skyrocketing. We've we passed legislation to reduce that. We paid. We passed legislation to start paying down our debt and reducing spending and getting inflation under control. But guess what happens over in the Senate? We have Senator Chuck Schumer who refuses to pass these common sense bills that would actually address the issues that the American people care, care about, which means you know money in their pocketbook, food on their table, and gas in their gas tanks at affordable prices, and undoing what Joe Biden has done. We don't have a partner in the Senate. I think that's the number one issue because the Democrats refuse to work with us. Congressman Stubbe, uh, government shutdown looming once again. This is an issue that Congress has to deal with. Um, if you don't find a compromise with Democrats on the border in some way, shape, or form, uh, you know, are the Republicans going to say, shut it down? Or are they going to play their card that way? It's, no one wants to see that happen, but it seems like a, a last resort at this point that, that might need to move forward. Well, I don't certainly think we should compromise. Uh, the the it, it, everything's broken because the Biden administration broke it. When Trump took office, uh, we had a secure border. Uh, they were building the wall. We were doing things like the Remain in Mexico policy that they all got rid of. And since then, we've had 10 million illegal immigrants come into our country. Records amount of fentanyl that's killing Americans every single day because of the policies and the law that this administration is breaking. All they have to do is enforce the law, and we wouldn't be in the situation that we're in. And I. I absolutely believe wholeheartedly that we have to, as a Republican House, stand on closing the border down. The American people have called for us to do that. They put us in charge of the House to do that. And I think we use the budgetary process in order to accomplish that policy objective. And if there's common sense principles that you put out and Joe Biden or the Senate doesn't want to go, with, uh, go along with them, uh, they're shutting the government down, not the Republican Congress. I think it's always important to remember that. But I want to move to this because Americans are not too happy with Joe Biden's job performance. But former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says we should all just be, uh, you know, a little more grateful. So let's just take it to the kitchen table about people's health, financial well-being, their freedom to live their lives, and again, the opportunity that Joe Biden has given them. Nicole, freedom to live your life. Joe Biden won't give you any freedom. You can't pick your stove, your dishwasher, your car. They're, they're taking all your freedom away. And Nancy Pelosi, yeah. I think you said this at the start, she's gaslighting to the American people. <laughs> and you're also broke at the oh, same time. That's absolutely right. right. I mean, look, you're paying more for gas in your tank. You're paying more to heat your home. You're paying more on your electric bill. You're paying more for the food on your table, all because of Joe Biden's anti-energy policies and inflationary spending. That's the fact. We have come in and we've actually stopped these massive omnibus spending bills that were driving us, driving this debt uh, skyrocketing and the inflation skyrocketing. We, we've actually put an end to that. That's what a House majority has done. And again, our policy which we've been passing that would address these issues mm. would actually uh, are being stopped in the Senate. But look, but the young family can't Congress, even purchase one second, a you, home because guys, mortgage rates. The, the Congress keeps passing CRs, so we're not actually implementing those policies uh, in mass. We keep, we, we're continuing with the funding that was happening in 2022, and that horrible deal was cut with Nancy Pelosi and, and Mitch McConnell. So we really haven't done that yet. It's you know we look forward to a couple of weeks from now when hopefully the House is going to do that. But as of yet, it hasn't happened. 
Yeah, but the, but the additional massive omnibus packages that he was spending, those have stopped. We haven't done that anymore. But you're right. We have to pass the remaining appropriations bills and hope that the Senate does as well so we can actually negotiate yeah. better spending levels that the American people can afford. Because if you keep increasing inflation and increasing the interest rate the way we've seen the Federal Reserve doing, it's only putting pressure on families. They can't afford a mortgage. Uh, they can't afford to take out a loan. Uh, and that is what Joe Biden and Bidenomics have given yeah. the American people. We we, we have to restore some common sense and fiscal responsibility. I'll give you some uh, stats, actually, that we have. So we use this on my show today. If you were living under a Trump presidency at the end of the year, Congressman Stubbe, you had 6000 extra dollars in the bank. If you're living under the Biden presidency, you're negative 4000 So that's a delta of about $10,000, which for most hardworking Americans means a lot. Is this going to be the primary issue and, and those kinds of numbers that drive people to the voting booth? Yeah, it absolutely is, and, and you're right. Uh, the economy was very different under President Trump than it is under President Biden, and Pelosi's talking about the kitchen table. Well, the majority of kitchen tables discussions in America today are how worse they're off under the Biden administration from immigration to the economy to their checkbook to energy, you name it, uh, than they are under the Trump administration. That's going to weigh on people very strongly when they go in the voting booth in November because at the end of the day, if they don't have the money to be able to pay their bills like they used to, inflation has, has caused uh, huge economic challenges for most Americans, that's going to play into their decisions that they make in November. Yeah, absolutely. Congressman Meliantakis, Congressman Stubbe, thank you for being with us. We appreciate it.